long struggled with the debate over whether talk show hosts are journalists or not. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time in this business, decades. Uh, I don't like to brag about it, but I've never considered myself a journalist. I'm, I, I joke about being a big mouth talk show host. That's why I've got opinions. I've got strong opinions. Um, I didn't go to school for journalism. I'm not, I, I don't know the journalistic uh, ethics. I just make it a point to be truthful and to be direct and, and um, as transparent as I can be. But I'm not a journalist. I think it's Sean Hannity, who's a friend of mine, who has said over the years, well, I'm technically an opinion journalist. So I don't know. I, 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 it might be a distinction without a difference. But for me personally, I think when you're in the talk show host opinion realm, you're not a journalist. Now, Stephanie Rule over at MSNBC is considered a journalist with a capital J. This is astounding to me because of her actions this week with regards to Democrat presidential candidate Kamala Harris. I first saw Stephanie Rule on the radar over the weekend when she was a guest with Bill Maher. And she sounded like a, a Kamala Harris surrogate. She mixed it up, I think, with Brett Stevens on Bill Maher's set and was very much on board and in the tank for Kamala Harris. And I remember making a mental note. I thought, well, you know, maybe she's just like MSNBC, the MSNBC version of Hannity. Maybe she's just an opinionated talk show host like Laura Ingram or Jesse Waters or Janine Pirro. Maybe that's what, because I don't watch MSNBC. I play clips once in a while when it's newsworthy. I despise their, their ideology. I disagree with them thoroughly. So why am I going to watch? Always a mass, it always fascinates me when people hate watch or hate listen to things. I'll get email from people that say, I listen to you every day and I hate everything. I'm like, why do you torture yourself? I mean, anyway. I don't hate watch MSNBC. I don't watch MSNBC. So I don't know much about Stephanie Rule. I looked her up. I mean, she's considered, she's called at Wikipedia an American television journalist. She hosts something called the 11th Hour. She's the NBC News senior business analyst. Previously, Stephanie Rule was managing editor and news anchor for Bloomberg Television and editor at large for, for Bloomberg News. So I'm thinking, well, I guess she's a journalist. So then I started to get confused. Why is she mounting a vociferous defense for Kamala Harris in an, on Bill Maher prior to the sit-down interview that Kamala gave last night to Stephanie Rule on MSNBC? So I'm confused. I'm a little baffled by this. And then I see Stephanie Rule sit down and say in an interview, Kamala ha Harris's answers aren't really all that important. What's important, basically, is that we just got to get her elected. Here's what this so-called journalist, Stephanie Rule, said about her conversation with Kamala Harris. One could watch that and say, well, she didn't give a clear, direct answer. That's okay, because we are not talking about clear or direct issues. It <laughs> you wait a minute. You sat down with the Democrat nominee for president of the United States and it doesn't matter that she didn't give any clear answers because you didn't ask any clear questions? Christian, can you play that one more time? This is, again, journalist with a J, Stephanie Rule, who landed Kamala Harris for a big interview last night on MSNBC explaining why you shouldn't be disappointed if you couldn't glean anything out of Kamala Harris's answers. One could watch that and say, well, she didn't give a clear, direct answer. That's okay, because we are not talking about clear or direct issues. Yeah, um, she was definitely not talking about clear or direct issues. Listen to this earth-shattering exchange over whether or not Kamala actually worked for McDonald's before or not. At any point in your life, have you served two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions, <laughs> on a sesame, sesame seed, seed bun, bun, working at a McDonald's? <laughs> yes or no? That's it. I have. Okay. Now the other job. Now and, the other job. But it was okay. not a small job. Like, I did okay. the fries. I mean, I, you know. 
Now, you know, it's been reported that she's lying through her teeth. There's no record of her ever working at McDonald's, that she's just making it up. You know, it's like over and over again, I was raised in a middle-class family. I mean, it's this is insane. I, 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 again, if you saw that clip and you thought, well, Stephanie Rule is MSNBC's version of Janine Pirro, you'd say it's not a big deal. It's kind of cute. If you think she's supposed to be a serious journalist who's asking serious questions of a presidential candidate, that might be concerning to you. That could be trouble. It sure is to me. Here's more of Stephanie Rule's explanation to that vicious Nicole Wallace, and she's another doozy over there at MSNBC, about the Kamala interview. She doesn't answer the question around if the GOP is controlling the Senate, if she can't raise corporate taxes, where is she going to get the money from, you know, to expand the child tax credit and do all the things she wants to do? And she says, we just have to do it. And that's great, and that's a campaign promise, but, but, but the issue is, if it means we're just going to borrow again, then what we're doing is we're just never addressing the deficit. Okay, but you said it doesn't matter because you're not asking any clear and direct questions, so we shouldn't expect any clear and direct answers from her. This is a journalist, and I guess we got to torture ourselves. Let's be tortured a little bit and peek into a little bit of the Stephanie Rule interview with Kamala Harris, who, as expected, is incapable of saying anything substantive when she speaks. But still, there are lots of Americans who don't see themselves in your plans. For those who say these policies aren't for me, what do you say to them? Well, if you are hardworking, if you have uh, the dreams and the ambitions and the aspirations of what I believe you do, um, you're in my plan. Wow. There it is. Welcome aboard. We're in La La Land. It's we're down the rabbit hole. We're 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 beyond the looking glass. We're in some bizarre times, my friends. Welcome aboard. It's Thursday, uh, dealing with a hurricane bat bearing down here in Florida, but so far so good. Great to have you along for the ride in the Relief Factor Studios. Our number is eight hundred six five five Mike eight hundred six five five six four five three. Holy cow! Buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Mike Gallagher. It's one thing to say Trump needs to get reelected based on policy, based on governance, based on the economy, based on uh, the illegal immigration crisis that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden created, based on the you know the world situation and peace throughout the world. I mean, it's one thing to say that, but it's another to say it's beyond that. It's deeper than this. It's spiritual. It's a spiritual battle. I mean, but again, just on policy, just on the quality of the candidates, it's not even a close call. Here's uh, here's Kamala on MSNBC. But still, there are lots of Americans who don't see themselves in your plans. For those who say these policies aren't for me, what do you say to them? Well, if you are hardworking, if you have... A, the dreams and the ambitions and the aspirations of what I believe you do, um, you're in my plan. Do you realize how bad that, you know how bad she is, right? Democrats know how awful she is. She's beyond awful. She is one of the worst presidential candidates I think we've ever seen. I'm trying to think of who, uh, Dukakis was better than her. Jimmy Carter was better than her. I'm thinking of the failed candidates in the history of America. She's, she is singularly awful. But it's beyond policy. It's more than that. It's, it feels spiritual. Now, again, as I said, I would believing the way I believe subjects me to some ridicule. Here's somebody from the blue state of Connecticut. So with your bizarre logic, Mike, God was protecting Hitler, Mussolini, and Lenin during their failed assassination attempts. The God of the universe decided to intervene for Trump, but let Cory Compatori die because Trump is a better man? <laughs> and of course, I said nothing of the kind. Your worship and praise of Trump is alarming. Get help. So there's a Connecticut viewer for you. Um, and look, 
I, I don't doubt that the Connecticut texter thinks Trump is just like Hitler and Mussolini. Those are the crazies. Those are the people who have demonized this guy to such an extent. Do you believe it's a spiritual battle? And incidentally, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Bet you anything, Connecticut, this texture, isn't a believer. Maybe this comes down to people who believe and people who don't. Sharon is in Illinois. Sharon, what do you think? Is this a, Are we in the middle of a spiritual battle right now, spiritual warfare? Absolutely, Mike. Hi. Good hi. Uh, hello. How are you? Uh, yeah, hi. And definitely, um, I'm an evangelical Christian, um, and um, I'm a retired school teacher. And I'll tell you that this is definitely a spiritual battle. And what I tell to my Christian friends is that God can use imperfect men and women. And he has in the past. We see it in the Old Testament. Look at King David, an adulterer and a murderer, right? And he was the apple of God's eye. So these people who want to demonize him, it's just horrendous to me. All these people coming out of the woodwork, he did this to me. That I can't believe half the stuff they're saying. I really can't. I know. I, know. I can't believe that. And yeah. I also have a lot of friends who have said just what you said. The The story of King David in the Bible should be remi- yeah. every single Trump hater, especially the so-called conservative and Republican never-Trumpers, they should remember right. how, how God viewed King David. And they, and, and they don't. Exactly. They have no grace. They have no forgiveness in their heart. They have no, they've just got no wiggle room whatsoever. And I, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's important. It's crucial. Um, and look, I, this is, we're in the, we're in the thick of it right now. And we understand that, but I believe this is beyond Democrats versus Republicans. I believe with all of my heart. And again, to the Connecticut texter, it might be over the top to say that God is trying to protect Donald Trump, but if you, this doesn't feel spiritual to you, what we're going through right now, you're probably not very spiritual. If this doesn't feel like a, a, a spiritual battle, well, I'll bet you're not particularly religious, and that's okay. A lot of people aren't. Here's a text, another text, incidentally, a follow-up from Connecticut. Mike, I'm in, I'm a Trump supporter. I live in Connecticut, too. I have a Trump flag in my yard, and I'm constantly being harassed by people like the texter you talked about. Hey, let's talk to a warrior, a culture warrior. The great Dinesh D'Souza has got a new movie out called Vindicating Trump. He joins us next. <laughs> 